I would now like to talk to you about some key policy areas. We desperately need a better knowledge and innovation system. We need you to increase investment in education and R&D. Most importantly, we need to rid ourselves of the idea that academia and industry are separate silos. We need to drastically upgrade the skill level of our people and simplify all our processes. India has the brightest youngsters in the world. But let me be blunt. Our education system does not do them justice. There has been a massive scaling up of investment in education and training. But we need to do much more. This is the land that produced Buddha, Kabir, Tagore and Ramanujan. We have to produce many more world class scientists, artists and philosophers. Over the last decade, we have achieved the fastest economic growth in the history of our country. Despite global headwinds, Indian industry has sustained growth because of the energy of our business community. The political stability and rational policy environment provided by our governments also made this possible. We believe that economic prosperity must include every single person. Poverty is neither befitting of human dignity nor is it conducive to good business. I would like to state clearly, and I have said it earlier in a meeting, I would like to state clearly that poverty cannot be fought without growth. You absolutely 100% need growth to fight poverty. There is no, there is absolutely no confusion in my mind about this. India is a system, there is a business engine, and there are people. You have to empower the business engine and you have to empower the people. It is a partnership. Maintaining robust growth has enabled the UPA government to invest in people. In 10 years, and this is a huge achievement which is not spoken about much, but in 10 years almost a third of India's poor people have come out of poverty. They have risen above the poverty line. Now there is a view that our investments in food security, employment guarantee and rural development are a drag on economic growth. I don't believe that there is such a trade-off. I don't believe there is a trade-off between investments in the social sector and in economic growth. For me, it is today's investments in people that create tomorrow's markets. And it is today's markets that allow us to invest in our people's futures. A mindset revolution is the fuel for economic growth. Today, self-help groups have shattered the hold of money lenders. They have enabled millions of women to seek credit to finance their aspirations. They are the new age customers for our banks. Women now believe that credit is their right and they see it as an opportunity. Such mindset changes are the results of years of sustained political effort years of investment in people, in their education, in their health, in rural infrastructure and in job creation. <laughs>